Well, welcome to the Vicarage Garden on Monday the 20th of April. As we be begin again our daily reflections, we've had a week off as we've been to Spring Harvest online. Uh, if you haven't accessed Spring Harvest, please make the most of it. It's a resource out there at least until the, um, the end of April and you can have a look at it on YouTube if you just put Spring Harvest 2020. Uh, if you don't know where to start, why not start with Bishop Jill Duff? Put Spring Harvest 2020 Bishop Jill Duff and listen to her talk on the first evening last Monday. My name's Johnny Blair and um, I'm starting off this week's Daily Reflections. Next Tomorrow is going to be uh, available from 8 o'clock in the morning again and it's a wonderful passage of looking at who Jesus Christ is. Today's a fantastic introduction from Colossians chapter 1. So Colossians 1 verses 1 to 14. You may want your Bibles, I'm not going to read it for us, but so perhaps you want to pause the video now and read Colossians chapter 1 verses 1 to 14. Paul writes to the Christians in Colossae. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all God's people. How has he heard of their faith and of their love? It's not because they've kept it in the four walls of a church or the four walls of a home, but because they've demonstrated that faith. They've shown their faith. And part of that demonstration of their faith is their way of life, how they're living and how they're loving others and as God's people. It talks about the, f the faith and the love that spring up from the hope that's stored up for us in heaven. And how the gospel, the good news of Jesus is bearing fruit and growing throughout the world as people live in that faith and in that love. And Paul then talks on as we go on to verse 9 of Colossians 1. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we've not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. Oh, I don't know about you, but certainly I want that. I want to be filled with the knowledge of God's will as the Holy Spirit fills me with wisdom and understanding. But why? Why might I want it? Why might you want it? Why, why? why might Christians want it? So that I, so that you, so that we may live a life worthy of the Lord and please God in every way. Yep, sounds good, but how? Well, bearing fruit in every good work makes me think of the fruit of the spirit of love and joy and peace, patience, kindness and goodness, gentleness, faithfulness and self-control can be found in Galatians chapter 5. So we might please him in every way and live a life worthy of the Lord by bearing fruit, by growing in the knowledge of God. We can do that as we spend time with God, as we read the scriptures, as we listen to the daily reflections and um, seek to understand more of who God is. So we bear fruit, we grow in the knowledge of God. We are strengthened with all power according to God's glorious might so that we may have great endurance and patience. Don't we all want that at any time, but perhaps even more so now? Great endurance and patience. But that's not just by self-will or our own strength but it's by the strength of the Holy Spirit. It's God who strengthens us in endurance and patience. And fourthly, so we've had, we might please God in every way and live a life worthy of, law, of the Lord by bearing fruit in every good work, by growing in the knowledge of God, by living in great endurance and patience, and fourthly, by giving joyful thanks to the Father. We can always look to God and be grateful. Four ways of how 
we might please him in every way. And then we get on to the, the, the fact that God is our loving Father. It's he who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of his holy people. It's not because of anything that we have done. It's not out of our own merits, but it's out of what he has done for us in Jesus Christ. As we come out of Easter, we remember Jesus' death and resurrection. He has qualified us to share in the inheritance of his holy people because it is God who has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us, brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. And I love that image of being rescued. We all need rescuing. We've been rescued from the dominion of darkness and we've been brought or transferred into the kingdom of the Son he loves. In football, people might pay over 100 million pounds to transfer a player into their team, transferred from one team to another. They no longer pay, play for the old team, they play for the new team. And you and I have been transferred through the message of Easter, through what God has done for us, through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He has paid for us far more than a hundred million pounds. He has paid for us through the death of his son Jesus. He has paid for us through the blood of Jesus Christ to transfer us from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his son whom he loves. We play for a different team now through faith in Jesus. We play for the kingdom of God. We play to live lives that may be worthy of our Lord, that may please God in every way. And as we've seen, we can do that in verses 10, 11, and 12 by bearing fruits in every good work, by growing in the knowledge of God, in great endurance and patience, and giving thanks to our Heavenly Father. Let's pray together. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, help us to bear fruit in every good work. Help us to grow in the knowledge of you, Lord God, as we spend time reading scripture and, and getting to know you better. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, help us to live our lives in great endurance and patience. And help us to live our lives in grateful thanks to our Heavenly Father for all that he is and all that he has done for us. Help us, Lord, to live our lives on your team, on your side, living for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.